Hello, I'm Eddie Blocken. I'm business developer at Ceres, and I will guide you through the presentation of the Solar Energy Research Institute of Singapore. Ceres was founded by the government of Singapore with the help of the National Research Foundation and the Economic Development Board in 2008 and embedded in the National University of Singapore. We focus on applied solar energy research and we have more than 160 staff and adjunct researchers for this task. We have close collaborations with the industry and government agencies and our strategic priority is to develop and commercialize solar technologies suited for urban and tropical applications and support industry development and the energy transformation towards higher solar adoption. At Ceres, we focus on three areas, solar cells, PV modules, and solar PV systems. For the solar cells, we are looking at the technologies that will be important for the industry in the next two to three years to come. And we try to develop industry relevant processes and techniques in order to enable those future technologies. For PV modules, we are looking mainly at how can we extend the lifetime? How can we improve their performance in a given situation like the tropics or an urban situation? And for systems, we are looking at where can we put more the, the modules? Um, how can we guarantee that they perform perfectly over the lifetime of the system? And how can we better predict how much energy the system will inject uh, into the grid in the near or in the long future. Another way of looking at the research is by industry segment. Here we also see highlighted the flagship programs of Ceres. BIPV or Building Integrated Photovoltaics is a technology where we use the space on building facades to put PV and generate electricity. Floating PV is a technology where we put modules on floaters on water and at that way can have two purposes of the, the water body. One is uh, storage of water, but also generation of energy. And thirdly is the tin film on silicon tandem solar cells. This is a technology that allows us to go to very high performing uh, cells in order to have more energy out of the sur same surface. Now let's have a look at the structure of Ceres. Ceres is headed by Professor Aberle, our CEO, and Dr. Thomas Reindl, our deputy CEO. Professor Aberle has a long tradition in research for cells and module technologies, where Dr. Reindl has been managing EPCs and has a long experience in talking to banks, investors, and grid operators. Then these two gentlemen take also the lion's share of uh, managing the different clusters. But we also have Dr. Uh, Wang Yan, who has been building several module factories. And he is, like nobody else, uh, able to say what are the challenges for module manufacturers. And then last but not least, we also have Mr. Tan. And Mr. Tan is managing the National Solarization Center. The different research clusters are divided in specific teams that each tackle an issue that needs to be resolved for photovoltaics. Let's look into the different research clusters. Let's start with Novel PV. The Novel PV concept cluster is looking at seed research, research that is not yet a top issue for our industry partners, but that will become important in the next years to come. One of those topics is tandem solar cells, where we bring efficiencies of cells into the 30%, which we do by putting two cells on top of each other and let them harvest the energy that they are best capable of. Other topics are perovskite solar cells or solar fuels, where we create chemicals by the use of sunlight. The key in such a cluster is a team that can characterize all these new technologies. And this is the characterization lab. They have all the latest tools in order to be able to analyze in detail 
the improvements that are made by the researchers on these technologies. The other research cluster is the silicon solar cells and modules cluster. This cluster is looking at the, uh, the industry-relevant technologies that are at the moment taking about 90 to 95 percent of the, of the market. And as modules and cells need to be developed together in order to get as much energy output as possible, both technologies have been put together in one cluster so that a joint optimization of the energy output can be achieved. And the, the main focus is not getting the highest efficiency cell, it is developing industry relevant technologies that have a good balance between performance, cell efficiency and cost. In order to have industry relevant research, we have to use industry tools and industry methods. And at Ceres, we have a whole pilot line that allows us to develop all these different technologies. And the same is, of course, also true for the module development in this cluster. So also here, industry-relevant tools are used in order to create the best possible modules uh, using specific technologies. The next cluster that I want to look at is the PV modules cluster. This cluster is mainly looking at how can we change the modules that the adaptation of uh, solar becomes more proliferant. And that can be done by, for example, looking at bifacial modules, which allow to also generate electricity from the backside, or using the modules at novel applications like noise barriers, and maybe improve the adaptation of PV by making it more less visible or more pleasing for the eye uh, to, uh, to look at. Last but not least, uh, being able to recycle these technologies is becoming more and more important as the, the systems start aging and uh, we need to be ready to uh, allow a circular economy for these uh, technologies. Also for the PV modules cluster, it's important to be able to measure the modules that you are developing or that have been asked to verify for their well performance. The PV module cluster has an ISO 17025 accredited lab and they are able to measure most of the um, issues that can occur in uh, a module. And this is important both for the research done, but also to better understand why certain modules are performing uh, well or less well um, out in the open. And let's have then a look at the Solar Energy Systems Cluster. The Solar Energy Systems Cluster is looking into three areas of research. First of all, how can we find more space to deploy solar in an urban tropical environment? That means, can we find alternative locations to put the systems? Secondly, how can we make sure that the systems that are deployed perform optimally for their lifetime? And if they don't uh, perform optimally as expected, what is causing it and can we take that cause away? Thirdly, we need to find uh, ways of better predicting the performance of the systems and uh, making sure that we can say in the next half hour or in the next five years, how much energy will this system generate and inject in the grid. And following the saying that the best proof of the pudding is in eating it, this team also has several outdoor test facilities where they can verify that the technologies that they have been developing on paper also really give the results that they expect. I already mentioned several times the importance of BIPV building integrated photovoltaics for Singapore and our dense urban environment. We did discover that 
BIPV is not always very well known with all the stakeholders that are involved in constructing buildings in Singapore. So that is why we have developed the Center of Excellence to better communicate the advantages and the issues that have to be looked at when implementing BIPV systems. Also, when there are any hurdles that block the deployment of BIPV, this center of excellence will tackle them and try to remove them. CIRIS is also deploying and doing research on one of the largest uh, PV, floating PV test beds in the world. And it allowed us to investigate what are the issues in uh, deploying such systems and what are the issues in operating it. And the next phase will be from going from inland seas to marine environments, which are even much more challenging. Another challenge is to predict the energy yield uh, over a longer period. And uh, this is very much depending on where do you build the system. So we have built four identical systems in four uh, different climate zones. And we are looking at what is the performance of these systems and why do they uh, perform differently. The result of that will be in more accurate energy yield uh, models that will be depend on uh, technology and location. And maybe even in the future that uh, uh, climate uh, specific components will be developed in order to generate as much energy as possible. Sometimes PV systems don't perform as expected and then Ceres can help to find the root cause of such a lack of performance and also analyze an economic way to remove the problem or reduce its impact on the performance of the system. And then we have the solar resource for forecasting. This technology allows to forecast for a specific area how much irradiance will be hitting that area in the next 5 to 30 minutes. This will allow us then, if we know the exact position of different systems and their performance, then we can extract from that how much will these systems inject energy into the grid. This is important for two reasons. The first reason is price setting. In the open market structure, it is important to know how much PV that will come into the grid so that the price setting mechanism can keep account of that. And secondly, if a lot of PV would be deployed in Singapore, it is important for the grid stability to know very short term how much the PV output will change due to changes in the, in the weather. And this brings us then to the National Solarization Center. This has been set up for having a good information flow to the public of Singapore and the government agencies. And the center also wants to help government agencies in implement more PV on their facilities in Singapore. This brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching it and you can always reach out to us or have more information on our website, Cirrus.se. Thank you.